let's take a look at the new V Battle decks on PTCGO. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sableyes. I'm Mitch and today, as I mentioned, we're going to take a look at the new V Battle decks that are out now. Um, you can buy them for about 15 bucks US, I believe. It's about that much. Uh, you can get codes on wherever you get your codes from as well. You can pick those up. The V Battle decks, Venusaur V and Blastoise V. Obviously very, very cool additions as we go into Shining Fates coming out later on this month. I've got both of these uh, V Battle decks online. What we'll do is we'll take a look at the contents, then I'll show you how you can upgrade each one to be slightly more competitive on the standard ladder at the moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to battle them against each other as a kind of introduction to competitive Pokemon TCG because these decks, obviously upgrading a theme deck to play against real standard legal competitive decks is quite difficult uh, and this is actually a really really cool way to go about teaching your friends how to play these games so if you've got the cash and you want to put them together then this will be a really really good video for you what we'll do is we'll take a look at the decks first and then I'll show you how to upgrade them so we'll start with Venusaur first as you can see it is generic theme deck fair but obviously we do have a copy of Venusaur V. It has double edge, 190 damage for two grass and a colorless, does 30 damage to itself, and it also has leaf drain for two energy, which deals 50 damage and heals 30. Uh, these, these decks are pretty good because they obviously give you some standard legal and competitive cards. Um, I have definitely seen better theme decks before. Uh, these V Battle decks are a little lackluster, but you can grab yourselves copies of Great Ball and Evo Incense. There's Switch here as well. Uh, Bead as an option. Um, and obviously Sonya is also a good card going into the Sword and Shield format. So very, very uh, nice trainer setup. Unfortunately, the rest of the Pokemon line is a little bit awkward. And you notice it's 21 Pokemon, 21 trainers, and the trainers are pretty average. So instead of playing this deck, what we'll do is we'll upgrade it to make it a little bit more standard, kind of uh, competitive. Take a look at that now and see how it goes. We just put together a little bit of an upgraded version. Now, obviously, you don't need to buy your cards in gold. It's just something that I do because I'm silly. Uh, but we have included that Venusaur V as our main attacker. Double Edge 190. Uh, and instead of having it supported by all those random Pokemon instead, we're going to have it supported by Voltage Beat Rillaboom. Now, this card is really, really good because it allows you to accelerate Grass Energy from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. You can do that once per turn per Rillaboom. Grab two Grass Energy out and shuffle the deck afterwards. A hammer in is also a decent attack, but we are going to try and use Venusaur V. We also have a couple of other attackers that synergize quite nicely with Rillaboom. We have Shaman Prism with Flower Storm. Two Grass Energy does 30 damage, times the amount of basic energy attached to all of our Pokemon. And I also have one copy of Rowlet with Wind Shard here to help clean up some of the damage that Venusaur V does. So obviously you won't be able to one-shot things as consistently with Double Edge, you might be able to finish them off with Rowlet. Now, this upgrade gives you a couple of extra standard legal cards, things like Professor's Research and Marnie, which you can pick up quite easily from old theme decks, from Sword and Shield, Boss's Orders. Um, if you buy both of these theme decks together, you actually get, instead of the, uh, the Giovanni one, you get a copy or two of the Lysander Boss's Orders. So that comes with the theme decks if you buy them both together. Definitely a good consideration, and then a couple of Bird Keeper as well. Uh, a couple of cards that are a little bit more expensive, Crobat V and Dedenne. Uh, these are cards that you'll want to pick up to play in standard anyway, because they're both incredibly good. Um, but essentially what I've tried to do is I've tried to make it so that if you buy all the cards for these two decks, then you're getting pretty much everything that you would need to build a standard legal deck going forward apart from the Pokemon. So that's what I've tried to achieve. Um, this deck actually works pretty well. What I'll do is I'll jump across to the Blastoise theme deck, talk about that, and then we'll show these two decks in action up against each other. So this is our Blastoise V battle deck. I think that this V is the better of the two, so if you can only afford to pick up one, I'd be picking up Blastoise. Uh, the V is better, and the V Max, when that eventually comes out, I believe is better as well, but don't quote me on that. We will have those videos up as soon as humanly possible. Torrential Cannon, 200 damage for 3 water energy, and then you can't use this attack next turn. 
and water gun for one. Again, it has a series of uh, water attackers, a couple of interesting uh, trainers. Uh, you get some more interesting stuff like Capacious Bucket, which is quite an quite a good card to have for a deck like this. Um, you could also get Spit Out Shot Cremoran, uh, which is a decent attacker to do a bit of snipe damage, but we probably won't use it. And you can use your Aracudas to get different Cremorans attacking if you need to. Not, not this one, but the other one. What's it called? The, the other one from this one here. Continuous Gulp Missile. You could have that one if you'd like. Um, but again, it's kind of a little bit dodgy. None of the none of the Pokemon in here you really want apart from the V. The Capacious Bucket is good. You get switches and Great Balls and Beads and Sonyas and all that kind of stuff. But again, we want to make it slightly more competitive, slightly better at teaching how to play the game. So this is what it's going to look like instead. So again, we do have Blastoise as our main attacker in the deck. But we're going to be powering it up similarly as uh, our Venusaur deck with a Pokemon that can accelerate energy. Frostmoth accelerates water energy to your benched water Pokemon. High Stance lets you attach as many energy from your hand as you want to your benched water Pokemon, uh, as long as they are, obviously, water type and on the bench. Um, and this brings me to my first point that I want to make about teaching people to play the game. These two expanded kind of... Uh, upgraded versions of these theme decks are really good to play against each other to teach people how to play the game because they've got a lot of the core mechanics that standard legal decks use to be competitive. Now, one of the things that we've got straight away is energy acceleration. If you only, if you can only attach one energy per turn, then your attack needs to be very cheap or very, very good. So things like Eternatus, two energy, it's relatively cheap, does 270 damage, that's insane. If you don't have that, then you need to have energy acceleration. You need to break that rule of not being able to attach more than one energy. So Frostmoth and Rillaboom does that for our basic Vs here. Uh, we also need backup attackers. We cannot just rely on our main attacker all the time. That's why the other deck has Shaman and Rowlet. This one has Articuno with Cold Cyclone, 70 damage for two water energy, and then move it to a Pokemon on the bench. That's really, really good. Um, the other thing that's important to note when it comes to Pokemon on a competitive level is that you want to be as consistent as possible, which is why instead of playing those thin lines of Pokemon Search and those massive lines of other random Pokemon, we've given you four copies of Quick Ball, there's four copies of Pokecom, there's four copies of Professor's Research, four copies of Marnie. I know they're expensive, but Dedenne and Crobat as well. One copy of both of those, you'd be surprised at how much more consistent a standard legal deck will be with one copy of Dedenne and one copy of Crobat. You don't need to play more. Right? If you've got if you've got the time to put in to get those cards, they will make your decks infinitely better. Um, but I just I just figured that this would be a kind of good way to teach people who are maybe trying to get their friends into the game, or maybe collectors that have the cards but don't know where to start. These two upgraded decks playing against each other are actually really, really good ways to teach new players how standard competitive Pokemon actually works. So what I've done is I've asked a friend of the channel, Blake, to play a couple of games against me. Firstly, I'm going to play Blastoise up against him playing Venusaur, and then we'll swap it around. I'll play Venusaur, he'll play Blastoise, and I'll show off some of the ways that that, obviously, consistency works, plus energy acceleration and sequencing and all those types of things can turn you from someone who just plays casually with the theme decks to someone who might consider playing competitively in the future. Alright, so Blake is starting off first, he's got an energy on a Venusaur and that's about it. So we're going up here. Now, the first thing that we really want to do is we want to get access to our attacker or our backup attacker. So we've got Pokecom here, we can shuffle away the Frostmoth to try and find one of those Pokemon. I think Blastoise V is a pretty good choice, but Articuno is also good. We can get the Blastoise with Quick Ball if we want to. Let's uh, play that Quick Ball down, get rid of a Water Energy, and grab ourselves a Crobat, actually, I think. Will give us a better chance of drawing into some stuff here. We can attach to Articuno and then use Crobat to draw four cards. You can see why Crobat makes these decks that much more consistent. Um, we've got a Frostmoth and a Pokecom here. I think I might just, oh, I think I might just Marnie. I could come for that Blastoise that I was talking about. We don't really need it at the moment, but it might be worth doing. Man, it's just Marnie. We'll just Marnie. That'll be fine. Um, and we didn't get the Blastoise, but that's also fine because we got the Switch, which is what we're ultimately looking for. Now, the best thing about the Articuno in this Blastoise deck is that it's going to protect the Snom. So, Blake is not going to be able to gust out that Snom 
with uh, and attack it with Leaf Blade with Venusaur because of the Blizzard Veil ability on Articuno. It also means that we've got a little bit of extra time to try and get ourselves access to a Blastoise for next turn. We can grab ourselves an Evo Incense. We can use our Evo Incense here to search for Frostmoth next turn and then the Dene and grab ourselves a, uh, a Blastoise, which would be great. Uh, on Blake's side of the field, he's setting up relatively nicely. He's got himself a Grookey and a Shaman, and he's going to actually boss here and bring up the Crobat and get a little bit of damage on that, hoping that I don't have another Switch in my hand, but unfortunately, I do. Let's just grab this Frostmoth. So what we can do... What we can do here is we can use the Ice Dance ability to attach the Water Energy in our hand to Articuno, then switch into the active again. This means that we still get our energy attachment for turn if we need it. Um, we don't have access to any Pokemon. There's three Pokecoms there, which is quite unfortunate. We don't really uh, we don't really like that at all. I'm just going to research all of that away. I'm going to try and find ourselves a Blastoise, and there it is. So now we can use Training Court to grab ourselves an energy back, and then Ice Dance to put two of those Water Energies onto the Blastoise V. Uh, maybe just one, actually. We can just we can hold on to one. We don't need to do two. Grab another Blastoise. Um, because what we can actually do is we can play this second Blastoise down, attach to that with Ice Dance, and then Cold Cyclone will allow us to put two water energies onto another Blastoise, which is fantastic. Okay, so we're starting to set up here. Now Blake obviously hasn't got his energy acceleration out yet, which is a bit of a problem. Um, his obviously has rare candy, which is slightly more difficult than ours, which is just manually evolving. Um, but there's obviously pros and cons to it. I'd argue that Rillaboom is probably, a, 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 like on in a in a vacuum, a better energy accelerator. But you don't know, I, like you know, it it doesn't really matter. Um, what what am I talking about? I'm trying to sound professional, but I can't do it. Let's just research. Um, we need to find a switch here. It's going to be quite tough to do. Um, we don't actually find one. It might just be worth. Right, let's just take a look. Let's grab ourselves some energy. Oh, let's, let's not worry about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If we have the switch, we have the switch. I'll attach to the active, and then I can Ice Dance onto the Blastoise um, and get those guys powered up. Worst case scenario here is that Blake knocks out the Articuno and we move on with our lives. Um, otherwise, next turn we can Cold Cyclone or Retreat, which is good. Bird Keeper for Blake means that he can go into the Shaman. Now, the Shaman has free retreat, which means that that Bird Keeper is actually really, really good in this deck because it allows for a lot more mobility. That's what the Air Balloon is for in the Blastoise deck. But obviously, Air our Bird Keeper being a supporter is a uh, is a bit of a is it's a bit of a problem because um, you don't get to draw as many cards as you would like, and that's one of the problems that Nobby is having at the moment. Uh, he is really struggling with finding uh, extra cards and energy to try and get himself the knockouts that he needs. Now, he's actually healed enough with Leaf Drain that we can't retreat into the Blastoise here and get the knockout. So I think I think we might need to get the energy onto the Articuno here uh, and then just Cold Cyclone again. Uh, we have Boss's Orders, which would be really good to be able to knock out the Thwacky, but unfortunately has more than 70 HP. So... What we'll do is we'll just Cold Cyclone again. We'll move those energies onto Frostmoth. And if Blake chooses to knock out the Articuno, he chooses to do that. If not, then um, I don't know what he's going to do, realistically. Uh, finds the Rillaboom with Turfield Stadium. Now, Turfield Stadium I didn't talk about. I didn't talk about either of the stadiums, actually, but I'll talk about them now. Turfield Stadium helps you find Grass Evolution Pokemon, which is really, really good for Rillaboom. It's definitely worth having a couple of copies of, because Grass decks use that stadium quite a lot. Um, with the water deck, we're actually using Training Court, which you've seen in action already. Gets us access to energies that have been discarded. With Frostmoth, that is a very, very good ability. So that's the kind of idea, the things that you're looking for when you're building decks is how do I get these synergies to work? How am I going to be able to get the uh, like get the attacker that I want attacking, attacking every single time? Uh, now, we've got a couple of options here. We can bring out the Shaman. It does 30 damage for every grass. I think it's actually better to just bring out the Rillaboom here because I don't think they can knock me out. Um, and this is a thing called... Uh, it's called... But it's, it's not the best example of it, but it's a thing called momentum, right? Because you're looking in a Pokemon game 
to gain momentum over your opponent. What that means is you want to be able to put yourself in front on turn. So like, I've attacked and taken a prize. That's all well and good, I'm in front. But if my opponent takes a prize on this turn, then I don't have momentum as such, I'm just in front. At the moment, by taking that prize on the Rillaboom, not only do I guarantee that Blake cannot take a knockout on my attacker, which is really, really good, I also restrict him being able to attach more energy to different Pokemon, which is also incredibly good. And it guarantees that I'm not going to get knocked out by any of his attackers. So it's, a, it's one of those things where you go, okay, I know that I'm going to be safe. I think it's probably okay to just go for it this way. And uh, now, since I've got the switch, I can Torrential Cannon again, knock out this Shaman, and again, I know, unless Blake uses Boss's Orders, which he could use, he could definitely use it, unless Blake uses Boss's Orders, I'm still going to be in front in this game. Now, that is obviously really, really good. I forgot to mention as well that I'm not, I wasn't actually in front by taking that prize. I was regaining momentum, because Blake had already taken a knockout on my Articuno, so it's a good thing that I know what's going on at all times. Um, now the next thing we need to do is we need to talk about prize mapping because prize mapping is also really, really important. It gives us an idea of how we're going to go about winning this game. Now I can win this game in two turns if everything works out perfectly for me. I can take a knockout in this Venusaur in the active because I'll be able to do two, uh, do, blah, 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 blah. I'll be able to do 200 damage next turn. It's going to heal off 30, but I can still do 200. I need to retreat, but that's fine. I can just attach this air balloon here. Um, then, oh, hang on a second, that's the wrong stadium. I needed the I needed the other stadium. I thought that that was uh, training court. Whoops. Uh, we can attach to the Blastoise, and then we can just retreat into our damaged Blastoise here. And Torrential Cannon, that seems fine. We don't have a huge amount of cards left. I probably should have Marnied, though. Anyway, I was talking about prize mapping. I know that I'm going to knock out that Venusaur this turn. And that means that I only have two prizes left to take. I know that I'm going to get those prizes off of the Crobat on that bench. I can knock that out, take two prizes and win the game. It's within range of me knocking out in one shot, which is good. I need to find boss's orders in order to do that. Now, I got incredibly lucky there off of the prizes and managed to find it. What I should have done is I should have Marnied, because I believe there's another one left in the deck. And that would have given me the best chance possible to try and win the game. Now, Blake is actually going to Marnie me, and that might punish me for only getting that boss off of the top deck. So we're about to find out whether this goes completely wrong or whether I was right and there was another boss in the deck. There was not. Okay, so this becomes a bit of a problem, right? Because I don't have boss's orders. I've got two attackers. One of them is damaged. The good thing for us here, though, is that I do have enough time to take two shots at this Venusaur. Um, because obviously that Venusaur needs to take three prizes and there are not three prize Pokemon on my side of the field. So... That is good. I still have the momentum in this game, um, and the mapping of the prizes is still kind of uh, still working out for us a little bit. Now, what I should probably do here is I should probably play down the air balloon on the active and then play research. Be careful. Sometimes you might find yourself in my position where I've got seven cards in hand and only one left in the deck. That card is a Marnie. Uh, I've got the Ordinary Rod, so I can shuffle stuff back in. It's not like I'm going to deck out and lose that way. But it's definitely worth considering. Um, I think I'm going to play the Snom down here. Because if I get Marnied... Actually, is it worth it? It might... It, no, it's worth it. If I get Marnied, then I'm going to get my hand shuffled into my deck. And I'm going to draw four cards. This way, if Blake Marnies me, I am guaranteed to win. If he bosses me to try and stall me out, I've got a really good chance of winning the game as well. So, it's still in my hands here. Um, it looks like Blake is powering up Rowlet on the bench to try and get an attack off with that. Because he knows that if I attack into this Venusaur, I just win. Which he obviously doesn't want. Sorry, I, I hope that this has been alright. I've been throwing some... Not some high-end concepts, but some concepts that probably... Like are a little bit difficult to, to grasp in the, at the speed at which I am providing them. So I completely understand if, you, if all of this is just going over your head. But these are the types of things that you kind of that you pick up when you play competitively um, quite a bit, which I obviously do. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm the best player in the world because I'm definitely not, but I can I can hold my own. 
Right, now Blake has got a decision to make. Does he take the knockout on the Dedene and hope that I don't have boss, or does he just tap me a little bit? Looks like he's just tapping. Um, and that means that we actually just go on to win the game here. We can just train in court, grab ourselves an energy, retreat to a Blastoise, and gust up the uh, Crobat or Dedene to win. What Blake could have done there is he could have knocked out the Dedene. I'll take the knockout on the Venusaur. You have a good deck. Thank you very much. I'll give you the, I'll give you the little heart. Um, what he could have done is he could have knocked out the Dene and hoped that I missed in order for him to try and get a knockout on one of the Pokemon that he'd hit. So there's a couple of things that could have happened there. Blastoise ends up winning this one. Let's flip it around now. Okay, so now I am in control of Venusaur V. Again, I mentioned this in the intro. I think this is the weaker version of the two. If I was going to buy one myself, I'd be grabbing Blastoise. Um, but it's definitely still able to win if we get a little bit of luck here. Now, the best part about this hand is we've started with Shaman, so we've got a free Retreater. We've got an Energy Attachment. We top deck the Marnie, a Supporter, which is always good. And the Grookey is in play. And that's the most important thing, right? This is a, this is a, little, a little lesson that you can teach your friends when you are playing these games with them. If you are playing a deck that relies heavily on using an Evolve Pokemon, you probably want to go first. The reason for that is you can only evolve your Pokemon a turn after they have been placed into play. And that means that if your deck relies on something like Rillaboom or Frostmoth to get energies accelerated, you probably want to have them down as soon as possible. For me, if I get a rare candy off of the top deck, that means that I've got access to Rillaboom on turn 2. I can start attacking with Venusaur and put myself in a really, really strong position. If I don't, then I've still got an opportunity down the line because Blake going second can't realistically get that setup happening. Uh, now, for us, we didn't find it, but we did find an energy, which is good. I can play that down. Uh, actually, should I put it on the Shaman or the Venusaur here? This is an interesting one. If I put it on the Shaman and we find Rillaboom, then uh, I can attack with Venusaur, or I can put it on the Venusaur. I can, maybe it is Marnie first. I can put it on the Venusaur, guarantee an attack, but if we find Rillaboom... And, you know, it's a, okay, it doesn't really matter. I found the energy, which is fine. And another Venusaur and another Grookey, which I like. We can get that Grookey down. Uh, this mitigates a bit of our risk. We'll grab ourselves a Rillaboom out of the deck. Let's do a little bit of thinning. And then we can uh, we can choose to retreat into our Venusaur and attack. If we want, we can play down the other Venusaur if we'd like, but we don't need to. There's no reason to. Um, and just hit into this Articuno for 50, which is exactly what Blake did to me in our last game. So hopefully things go a little bit better for us. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about something. I can't remember. It's alright. It'll come to me if it's important. Um, but yeah, so we're looking for that Rillaboom as soon as we possibly can. Now this hand appears pretty bad. There's no draw supporter, but... We do have access to two rare candies, so if we can get ourselves that stadium, Turfield Stadium, in play for one more turn, we can find Rillaboom and evolve this turn, which would be amazing. Um, it looks like this game is going pretty much exactly the same way as it was before. We've got an Articuno that is uh, getting Cold Cyclone out, and uh, I reckon what we're going to do here is we're going to grab a Rillaboom. We are going to evolve into that Rillaboom. Uh, and now I'm actually thinking that it might be worth using Rillaboom to get an damage uh, to get an energy onto the active and then boss up the Crobat. I think that actually might be the best play we have. Uh, firstly, because it's good for our prize mapping, because uh, that we only have to knock out two Blastoises to do that. But also, if we pay attention to Blake's side of the field, he only has one card in his hand, so. Playing Marnie right now might not be the best idea. So what I'll do is I'll put one Grass Energy on the active. We'll gust up that Crobat. Remember, Articuno's ability only affects water Pokemon. So we can take the Crobat. We'll get two prizes here. Hopefully we get a Professor's Research off of this. Um, off of this, That would be great. Quick Ball is fantastic. This Quick Ball obviously means that we can use something like the Dene or Crobat to draw cards, which is awesome. Uh, and since we've got the rare candy, there's actually a decent chance that we could end up with two Rillabooms in play next turn. In saying that, Blake could just knock out a Rillaboom right here, which it looks like he's going to do. So that's quite disappointing. But again, it's fine. We've got access to our attacker next turn, which I really, really like. So I'm not unhappy with this. We can guarantee the, uh, the second Rillaboom, so it's not a problem. 
Let's grab that now. And you can see how important energy acceleration is for these decks. Um, obviously getting that Rillaboom into play. If we hadn't have had that second Grookey, we would have been in a bit of trouble here because our next attacker would have probably struggled quite a lot. Um, what we'll do is we'll play down this uh, Venusaur, I think. Uh, then I can Voltage Beat. We'll grab two energy out of the deck. We'll put them onto our Venusaur. Um, that is probably an attacker that we are the most likely to use. Then I'll use Crobat. Um, then I'll not use Crobat. Quick Ball to grab the Dedenne and discard that Marnie so that we don't draw cards for Blake. Um, and we've actually got Bird Keeper here, which opens up an interesting possibility. I think I'm actually going to go for it just for fun. Well, Bird Keeper. This means that we can actually attack with Rowlet for free. Rowlet has an ability called Sky Circus, which means when we use Bird Keeper, we can ignore energy costs, right? We can ignore energy cost for our attack. And it does 60 damage to any of our opponent's Pokemon, which is really, really good because we've already hit into an Articuno for 50. So this is fantastic for us. It means that we've taken a prize. Our opponent probably knocks out this Rowlet next turn. But you know what? I don't really mind. That's not that big of a deal. Um, it will send Blake down to four prizes remaining, but we still have Shaman as a really powerful attacker here. Um, and it actually looks like Blake doesn't have a knockout on us, so we're getting a little bit lucky here. Um, you can see consistency is a really, really important thing. Both of these decks do struggle a little bit with consistency. You might find it hard uh, on the top tiers of the ladder to get good games, but you know... It's part, of the, it's part of the charm of Pokemon, isn't it? That sometimes you just don't quite get what you want. Uh, now, I'm actually going to grab the Venusaur out of the deck here with Quick Ball and then go on to play Professor's Research, I think. Let's just double check. I don't think there's any reason not to do that. I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, that's a thing called thinning, all right? So what you want to do is, if you don't need a card anymore, so like in this instance, I probably don't need that other Venusaur anymore, I can just discard it out of my deck because it's not only not required for me, I know that I'm not going to need it, but it also gives me a better chance of drawing into cards that I do need, like Boss's Orders, for example. Uh, again, speaking of it, I've just managed to find it off of the prizes. Shaman, you saw how powerful that was. We've got a Blastoise in the active now. We need to take one prize. So if we hold on to our Boss's Orders, which it looks like we're going to, we are actually guaranteed to win this game. We can bring out the Articuno or the Frostmoth with Boss and take the Knockout, which is actually quite good for us. So... You can see these two decks are quite even up against each other. In general, I think the Blastoise deck is a little bit better. I've said that a couple of times, but super, super fun. If you can put them together, play with your friends, you'll learn competitive stuff pretty quickly. So like I mentioned, a bit of a, a, bit of a different one in the sense that the gameplay uh, is less about being on the ladder and competitive, but more transitioning into being competitive. Uh, if you're a person who has come to this video to see how that kind of process works, then leave a like. That would be great. If you are, a, if you're a person that just watches regularly, then you'd know we reached the like target, which is 150 last episode. We, we got to this point, right? You're watching the video now, which means that we released it, which means that we met the like target, which is fantastic. Actually met it really, really quickly. As of the time of recording, I think it was about two or three o'clock my time, we hit that 150 like target, which was great. Uh, please like the video, share with your friends, um, if you want to upgrade these two decks to play on the standard letter, then it is a, it's going to be a struggle, but it's definitely doable. Um, overall, I would say if you're going to buy a theme deck, these probably aren't the ones that I would buy straight away. Uh, I'd be looking more at some of the old classics, maybe the uh, Leon Charizard one that could be worth picking up as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure about them. I'm looking forward to seeing how the V Battle decks go in the future though, because it appears that that's the position that Pokemon's taking. They're just going in that direction, which is going to be really, really cool. And it's good to see easy access to Pokemon V cards to get more people into the game. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. I've kind of lost my trail of thought, uh, my train of thought here in the outro because I got I got sidetracked by other stuff. Appreciate you watching. Like the video, subscribe, jump down in the comments and tell me what you think. Next video, whether it's tomorrow or on two days from now, whatever that is, Friday, will be uh, Gal um, Galarian Diamantan, I think. I think that's what it's going to be. If you want to see that soon, 150 likes. That's your target. And you're the type of people at the end of the video that are that are going to like the video anyway, aren't you? Because you can't, you can't stick around and watch all of this and not like it. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. Goodbye.